Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment we bring to you objective questions to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Consider the following statements. The Chandrayaan 2 was India's first attempt to land on the lunar surface and the objective of Chandrayaan 2 is to try and build on the evidence of water molecules shown by Chandrayaan 1 and study the extent and distribution of water on the moon. So, we have to select the correct statement. Yes, it was the first ever attempt if we talk about from Indian context to any lunar mission that we have to have a landing, a soft landing on the moon, which was not possible because when we talked about landing, it was a hard landing and Pragyan rover as well as Vikram lander got destroyed in the process. So, this is correct. First attempt to land on the lunar surface on the south pole of the moon which is undiscovered and if we talk about the objective yes it was to build on the evidence which has already been collected by Chandrayaan 1 in order to identify the presence of water. So both these statements are correct. The correct answer to this question is option C. The observations of the Chandrayaan 2 orbiter payloads have yielded discovery class findings according to the Indian Space Research Organization. Moving ahead. To the next question, which of the following are the sources for methanol production? High ash coal, agricultural residue, natural gas, municipal waste. We have to select the correct answer. Now, all of these are a source of methanol production. The correct answer is option D. Recently, the first indigenously designed high ash coal gasification based methanol production plant has been opened in Hyderabad. Methanol is a low carbon hydrogen carrier fuel produced from high ash coal, agricultural residue, CO2 from thermal power plants, natural gas and renewable sources such as municipal waste and biomass. Consider the following statements. The Thar Desert is bordered by the Indus River plain in the west and Aravali range in southeast. Barshans or Barkhans are saline lake beds that are found in the Thar Desert. We have to select the correct statement. Now, Barkans are not saline lakes. They are crescent-shaped sand dunes. So, the second statement is incorrect. The first is definitely correct. The correct answer to this question is option A1 only. Recently, in a major discovery, footprints of three species of dinosaurs have been found in the Thar Desert in Rajasthan's Jaisalmer district. The Thar Desert is bordered by the irrigated Indus River Plain to the west, the Punjab Plain to the north and northeast, the Aravali Range to the southeast and the run of Kutch to the south. Also, if we talk about Barshans or Barhan, are crescent-shaped sand dunes produced by the action of wind. Now, that is from one direction like this. These are Barhans. Okay. And the wind is blowing this way. So, it pushes the sand and causes crescent shaped of the sands to be sand to be made in this manner. Okay, moving on to the next question. Consider the following statements. Nilgiri's elephant corridor is situated in the Malwa plateau which connects the western and eastern ghats. The Nilgiri's elephant corridor is a migratory path which elephants cross in search of food and water. Article 51A Clause G states that it shall be the fundamental duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment. We have to select the correct statement. So, Nilgiri's Elephant Corridor is not situated on the Malwa Plateau but Sigur, S-I-G-U-R, okay? Sigur Plateau that connects the western and the eastern ghats. Alright, the second and the third statements are correct. The correct answer to this question is option B. Okay, let's talk about it. Now, recently the forest department has apprised the Madras High Court of the laborious process and difficulties in identifying, notifying and restoring elephant corridors in the Nilgiris district. The corridor is situated in the ecologically fragile Sigur Plateau which connects the western and eastern ghats and sustains elephant population and their genetic diversity. The Nilgiri's elephant corridor is a migratory path 
which elephants cross in search of food and water. Article 51, Clause 8, Sub Clause G states that it shall be the fundamental duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment. Moving on to the next question, consider the following statements. National Intelligence Grid is a counter-terrorism measure which functions under the Ministry of Defence. Trojans are non-replication programs that operate without the permission or knowledge of computer users. We have to select the correct statement. So, yes, Trojans are non-replication programs that operate without the permission of the computer users, such as all of us. We all use computers, almost every one of us. And NADGRID works under the Ministry of Home Affairs. So, the first statement is incorrect, the second is correct. The correct answer is option B, that is to only. The Prime Minister is soon expected to launch the National Intelligence Grid or NATGRID that aims to provide a cutting-edge technology to enhance India's counter-terror capabilities. And we have already discussed these two statements, so we shall move forward. Consider the following statements. He was a disciple of Mahatma Gandhi. He led the movements in an attempt to bring about a non-violent revolution in India's land reform program. The movements led by him were about urging the landed class to voluntarily surrender a part of their land to the landless, giving it the name Bhudan movement. So we have to see which of these iconic personalities does the above statement refer to. It refers to option C, that is Vinova Bhave. So the Prime Minister has paid rich tributes to Acharya Vinoba Bhave on his journey in a series of tweets. Vinoba Bhave was a disciple of Mahatma Gandhi, noticed the problems faced by the landless Harijans in Pochampalli, Telangana. He led the movements in an attempt to bring about a non-violent revolution in India's land reform programs. And the movements were about urging the landed classes to voluntarily surrender a part of their land to the landless, giving it the name Bhudar Movement. Moving on to the next question, India's largest open-air fernery has been inaugurated in which of the following states? Manipur, Himachal Pradesh, Assam, Uttarakhand. The correct answer to this question is option D, Uttarakhand. India's largest open-air fernery was inaugurated on September 12th in Uttarakhand's Rani Khet. The fernery is home to a large number of fern species, some of which are endemic to the state. Some hold medicinal value, while some are threatened species that demand care and conservation. Moving on to the next question, consider the following statements with regard to Aravali Range. This is the oldest range of fault mountains in India. The second highest peak of the Aravali Range is Sher. It spans through three states of India. So we have to select the incorrect statement. As we know, Aravalis, they span from three states and one union territory, that is of Delhi. So the third statement is incorrect. And this is the oldest range of fold mountain and not fault mountain. First statement is incorrect. Third is incorrect. The second is correct. So we have to select the correct answer based on the incorrect statements. The correct answer to this question is option C. One and three only. Insisting that revenue records only identify Ger Mumkin Pahar and make no mention of Ravali, a high level committee of the Haryana government has asked officials to identify the areas under Aravali on the basis of a 1992 notification of the Union Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Aravali ranges are an eroded stub of ancient mountains, is the oldest range of fold mountains in India. Also, the second highest peak of the Aravali range is Sher in Sarohi. It runs approximately 670 km in southwest direction, starting near Delhi, passing through southern Haryana and Rajasthan, and ending in Gujarat. So, as you can see, with the help of this diagram, spanning across Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Delhi. Alright? So, let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements with respect to the International Atomic Energy Agency. It is an independent international organization that reports annually to the United Nations General Assembly and it is headquartered at Hague, Netherlands. We have to select the correct statement. So, if we talk about International Atomic Energy Agency, it is headquartered at Vienna and not Hague. Okay? 
So the correct answer to this question is option A1 only. Iran has agreed to allow international inspectors to install new memory cards into surveillance cameras as its sensitive nuclear sites and to continue filming there. This was announced by Mohammad Islami of the Atomic Energy Organization of Iran after a meeting he held with the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi in Tehran. So, IAEA, it was created in 1957 and in response to the deep fears and expectations generated by the discoveries and diverse uses of nuclear technology. It is an independent international organization that reports annually to the UN, United Nations General Assembly, that is UN, GA, and it is headquartered at Vienna, Austria. Consider the following statements. With respect to Pegasus, Pegasus has been developed by the Israeli firm NSO Group that was set up in 2010. Pegasus infections can be achieved through so-called zero-click attacks. So we have to select the correct statement. Yes, Pegasus in order to be installed into your software of mobile phones or laptops even. What happens is, is it's a zero click attack. That means if a WhatsApp call from an unknown number comes through your uh, WhatsApp phone, through the WhatsApp only of course, and even if you do not pick it, the software of Pegasus as a spyware will be installed. So it's a zero click attack, that is correct. And it has been developed by the Israeli firm NSO Group that was set up in 2010. The correct answer is option C, both 1 and 2. The Supreme Court was scheduled to hear on Monday a batch of pleas seeking an independent probe into the alleged snooping on certain people in India involving Israeli spyware Pegasus. It is a type of malicious software or malware classified as a spyware. So, let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements with respect to Indian Coast Guards. It operates under the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Indian Coast Guards was formally established by the Coast Guards Act of 1978. We have to select the correct statement. So, if we talk about where is it, under which ministry does it function, it works under the Ministry of Defence and not Home Affairs. And the second statement is correct. The correct answer to this question is option B. Indian Coast Guard has saved lives of 11 fishermen whose boat underwent an engine failure and was stuck in the Bay of Bengal near Sagar Islands. The ICG protects India's maritime interest and enforces maritime law. The ICG was formally established on 18th August 1978 by the Coast Guard Act of 1978 of the Parliament of India as an independent armed force of India and it operates under the Ministry of Defence. Let's look at the practice question. Consider the following statements. Vedanta was based on Upanishads and their interpretations. Vedanta saw Ved as the ultimate source of information and whose authority could not be questioned. And Vedanta emphasized the path of karma as opposed to that of Nan. So we have to select the correct statement. I hope you'll be answering it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.